four years ago, Apple launched their base model Mac mini as part of their M series transition, delivering massive performance gains. Now in 2024, they've released the smallest, most powerful base Mac mini yet equipped with the M4 processor. But is it worth upgrading? Let's find out. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems. Today we're diving into the Apple family to compare the performance of the 2024 base model M4 Mac mini with the 2020 base model M1 Mac mini. If you're wondering whether it's time to upgrade your Mac mini or if the M4 is the right choice for your first step into the Mac ecosystem, well, you're in the right place. Both models were priced at $599 when they launched, but the M4 brings a bump in specs that could make a difference depending on your workload. In this video, we'll start with a quick look at the specs and features, then move on to some synthetic and real world benchmarks. We'll test everything from raw performance and editing workflows to AI driven features in Mac OS 15.1. By the end, you'll have all the info you need to decide whether the M4 is worth the upgrade or if the M1 still gets the job done for you. Diving into the specs and features, we'll quickly review the physical difference between these two machines. The M4 mini has a 58% smaller footprint than the M1, but is slightly taller. It adds two front-facing USB-C ports, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, and HDMI 2.1, supporting up to three displays at higher resolutions and refresh rates. However, it loses the rear audio jack and USB-A ports. On the networking front, the base model M4 sticks with the same gigabit ethernet port as the M1, but there's an optional 10 gigabit upgrade available for $100. And one final physical difference, the M4 ditches the rear exhaust vent seen on the M1. Instead, it pulls in fresh air through the bottom front and exhausts it out the bottom rear, keeping the design sleek without sacrificing cooling performance. Moving on to performance specs, let's dive right into comparing the base M4 processor with the base M1. The M1 Mac Mini featured an eight core CPU split between four performance cores and four efficiency cores. It came with an eight core integrated GPU, a 16 core neural engine, and eight gigabytes of unified memory, all neatly packed into a single chip. Now the base M4 stepped things up, it's rocking a 10 core CPU with the same four performance cores, but bumped up to six efficiency cores. You'll also get a 10 core integrated GPU and a 16 core neural engine, but double the unified memory at 16 gigabytes. That said, some things haven't changed. Just like the M1, the base M4 mini still comes with just 256 gigabytes of storage. Let's move into raw CPU performance. In the Cinebench 2024 multi-core test, the M4, despite adding just two extra efficiency cores, manages to nearly double the performance of the M1. Over in the Geekbench 6 multi-core test, it still maintains a commanding 68% lead. Switching to single core speeds, the M4 delivers equally impressive gains, a 54 improvement in Cinebench 2024, and a 57% lead in Geekbench 6 single core test. When it comes to the integrated GPU's compute power, the M4's 10-core GPU blows the M1's 8-core GPU out of the water, showing a massive 71% improvement in the Geekbench 6 metal compute test. So what does this all mean for real-world performance? With such significant raw CPU improvements, you'd expect to see big gains in everyday workloads, and for the most part, you will. That said, benchmark numbers don't always translate directly into noticeable performance difference, but there are definitely situations where you'll feel the extra power. I'll break it all down as we dive deeper into the real world tests. And let's talk photo editing, one of the Mac Mini's most popular use cases. Starting with the Puget Bench Photoshop test, the M4 delivers a huge 96% performance boost over the M1. This leap is thanks to the M4's improved single core performance and upgraded iGPU. What does this mean in real world use? If you're working with massive 16K 150 megapixel images or batch editing large photo sets, the M4 will save you noticeable time. Tasks like applying effects or filters on large files are significantly faster, making a real difference for photographers or professionals handling high resolution projects. 
but for basic tasks like color correction, photo manipulation, airbrushing, light compositing, the difference between the M1 and the M4 is far less pronounced. Actions like applying a mask or adjustments might take slightly longer on the M1, but we're talking fractions of seconds, some of the things most users won't notice. And this holds true for similar applications like Lightroom, Affinity Photo, Krita, or Painter. So, if your photo editing is more casual or focused on standard resolution work, the M1 is still perfectly capable, but if you regularly handle larger, more demanding projects, and you're being plagued by the dreaded spinning pinwheel, the M4 may be a worthy upgrade. Now, when it comes to video editing, things play out a little differently. If you're already using Final Cut, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve without constant frustration, then you're good to keep driving on with your current system. But if your video editing is starting to feel like an uphill battle, the M4 could be a game changer. Let's look at the test data. First, the M1 Mac Mini couldn't even complete the Puget Bench standard Premiere Pro test. Initially, it kept timing out while trying to render out some of the GPU effects. After extending the time allocation, Premiere just gave up and crashed. On the other hand, the M4 Mini powered through the test without breaking a sweat and scored exceptionally well. Now, to give you an idea, I've laid its score alongside a couple of current gen top tier x86 CPU equipped mini PCs for context. The M1 fared slightly better in DaVinci Resolve test, completing it, but falling 42% behind the M4. Then I loaded one of my own Resolve projects into both systems. The N1 managed to play back and scrub through the fully graded timeline at half resolution fairly smoothly, but it occasionally dropped frames. But when it came to handling the GPU effects and fusion elements, the M1 really struggled. In fact, it couldn't even render the project unless I removed the digital glitch effect I used in several of the transitions. The M4, however, handled the timeline fine. It didn't drop frames until it hit the effects and fusion elements, which it managed much better than the M1. And when it came time to render, the M4 completed the project, including all of the effects, in just over 1400 seconds, or just shy of 24 minutes. For comparison, the M1 took over 2100 seconds, nearly 36 minutes, and that was after stripping out all the effects. So if you're diving into more advanced video editing, the M4 Mac Mini is absolutely the better choice. It's a much more capable platform for handling heavier projects, effects, and workflows. Another real world test I ran was a 3D logo reveal in After Effects. Once again, the M4 was noticeably better when it came to timeline performance and RAM playback. This was a short, relatively simple 4K multi-effect project, but it included a pretty demanding 3D extrude effect. The M4 not only handled the editing process more smoothly, but it also rendered the project 124% faster than the M1. After Effects is probably one of the applications where the M4 shines across the board, whether you're working on simple projects or diving into more advanced 3D motion graphics, composite and VFX or broadcast design, it's all going to run better on the M4 Mini. That said, I need to add a caveat here. If you're more than just an occasional hobbyist with After Effects and are looking to do more professional ever work, you should probably set your sights on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And if you're agnostic when it comes to platforms like I am and just want the best tool for the job, a desktop PC with dedicated graphics may be a better fit. Another popular use for these Mac minis is basic development, especially within the Apple ecosystem, whether that's building Mac OS, iOS, watch OS, or even vision OS apps. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not an expert in Xcode, nor do I have much experience with it. For this test, a developer acquaintance pointed me towards an Xcode sample project that's representative of what of a Mac mini user might actually work on. In this case, we're building a Backyard Birds Mac OS app. The M4 Mac Mini built the project 75% faster than the M1, and that sounds impressive, but in real terms, we're talking about a difference of just 5.7 seconds. So whether shaving a few seconds off your build time is worth it depends on your specific workflow. And honestly, that's a subjective thing. I can't chart on a graph. Now, I don't do much more than basic Python scripting these days, but I've got friends in game development, backend development, and security 
nearly all of them work through a remote IDE or portal, meaning nothing is processed locally except for the browser itself. The same goes for a lot of productivity tasks. For example, my kids do all their schoolwork on base model MacBooks through their school's online portal, and my wife handles all her home office and productivity tasks in Office 365, which runs on cloud-based servers. And we can measure performance gains for browser-based workloads in browser benchmarks like Speedometer 3 on Safari and Jetstream 2 on Chrome, which tests how well a browser starts and execute web apps. The M4 does outscore the M1 by wide margins. Is the browser technically faster and more responsive on the M4? Well, yes. Will the human brain actually register the difference? Probably not. The same holds true for running local productivity apps like Apple's Pages, Numbers, or Keynote, or even the Microsoft Office Suite. The M4 will open and save documents nanoseconds faster, sort spreadsheet data milliseconds faster, and even query large data seconds a few seconds faster. But for day-to-day -day tasks like filtering your inbox or editing a document, you won't notice much of a difference. It's only with more demanding end of project tasks like converting a large document into PDF or exporting a big presentation to video that the M4 starts to pull ahead. Now, here's the thing. While my style is usually to present objective data and let you make the decision, I've got to inject some more subjective opinion here. If you just need a computer for basic web browsing, remote work, or productivity tasks, Neither of these Macs is a good choice in terms of price to performance. For those use cases, they're overpowered and overpriced. You can do all that work with no real noticeable difference for under $200. Take this EQ13, for example. I did a detailed review of it, which you can check out here, and I've got the updated EQ14 coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But in my opinion, you don't need to spend more than $200 for a basic web browsing home office computer. However, if you are committed to the Apple ecosystem, this is the lowest cost of entry into Mac OS. Now, before we wrap this up, let's talk about one last performance comparison, AI. I'm breaking this into two categories, starting with Apple Intelligence, those handy little AI tools built right into Mac OS 15.1. Here's the bottom line. Apple's intelligence works on both of the M1 and M4 Mac minis, and I didn't notice any performance difference between the two. I can generate bullet point summaries of articles and web pages, polish up an email, or search my photo library by keywords just as seamlessly on both systems. So if that's all you're looking for, you're not missing out by sticking with the M1. Now, when it comes to running pre-trained AI inference models locally, the story changes. This is where the M4 Mac Mini has a clear edge, thanks to its 16 gigabytes of memory, double that of the base M1. AI is why Apple made the bump in memory standard on the base M4. For example, if you're working with a 7 billion parameter large language model like Llama 2 in 16 bit or lower precision, it'll need about eight gigabytes of memory and under 20 gigabytes of storage overall. The M4 can handle this without breaking a sweat, but the M1's eight gigabytes of memory just isn't enough. And if all of that AI talk sounded like Greek to you, don't sweat it. Here's the takeaway. The extra 16 gigabytes of memory on the base M4 is plenty for most typical Mac mini appropriate tasks. But let's be honest, if your workflow actually benefits or needs more RAM, you should probably be looking at the M4 Pro instead. Now, Let's talk about storage, or rather the lack of it. The base model Mac Mini is still equipped with a measly 256 gigabyte SSD, just like the M1. In the M4 Mac Mini, the SSD is socketed, which means it's technically user serviceable. However, it's still a proprietary part with no official upgrade path. You can't just order a bigger drive from Apple or grab them from a third party. And because the storage controller is built into the M4's SOC, not the SSD module, adapting a commercial M.2 drive is impossible. So officially and realistically, the only way to upgrade the storage is to do it at the time of purchase. But brace yourself, 
it's $200 for an extra 256 gigabytes or up to $800 for a two terabyte upgrade. Now, because most of my viewers are intelligent, critical thinkers, I usually just show you the numbers. For example, in the fast, reliable SSD market, you can snag a four terabyte M.2 NVMe drive for about the same price as Apple's 512 gigabyte upgrade. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. I don't need to flail my arms around and scream predatory ripoff or anti-consumer. You get it, and yes, your conclusions are valid. That said, at the risk of being labeled an Apple shill, let me offer an alternative explanation. I've always thought of the base Mac mini as severely underpriced compared to its competitions. Apple's probably selling these things at a loss to get more people into their ecosystem. First perspective, the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, which is manufactured in the same fab as the M4, has a thousand unit trade price of $650 each, $50 more than the entire base M4 Mac mini. So Apple subsidizes the base model and makes up for it with pricey upgrades for those who can afford them. And honestly, I'm okay with this Robin Hood approach. Sony did it with the PlayStation and Microsoft still does it with the Xbox, selling the consoles at a loss and recouping through accessories, games, and subscriptions. And the base model Mac mini is the absolute best selling version of the mini. But here's the thing, in almost 2025, 256 gigabytes of storage just isn't enough, not even for the average user. Now, my entire family uses base model Macs with crappy storage, and it only works because we have a very fast 132 terabyte network attached storage server in the house. Apple, NAND memory is dirt cheap. It's time to bump the base model to at least 512 gigabytes and the pro to a terabyte for your entry level customers. Then you can offer one, two, and four terabyte upgrades at the same pricing scale for customers with deeper pocket. All right, editorial over, let's wrap this up. Is it time to upgrade your four-year-old M1 Mac mini? Or if you're new to the world of Macs, is the M4 Mac mini a good entry point? Honestly, there's no one size fits all answer here. My goal was to provide enough data and information about workloads appropriate for this class of Mac and to offer intermediate conclusions along the way to help you make a more informed decision. If I nailed that and helped you out, let me know in the comments. And if I missed something or you still have questions, drop those in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more tech insights. And I'll see you in the next one.